Hello, hello, and welcome. First off, I want to mention right off that this is Inner Peace Radio Blog, formerly known as Say Something Radio Blog. I decided to change the name, um, and I also decided to dedicate this radio blog to targeted individuals everywhere, all over the world. And I'm going to go into what a targeted individual is, but this show going forward will be dedicated to those people who are in this dehumanizing depopulation program. So as I said, um, the title of this radio blog is Inner Peace Radio. And I I also want to say I hope you guys can hear me. If you can't, please someone um, let me know through the chat room. And the chat room is open The call-in number for any comments that you might have is 323-443-7482. Let's just get into the show. Um, The show title is Gang Stalking Depopulation Program. And the description is people from all walks of life are being recruited to be the eyes and the ears of the state. People from all races, ages, genders, and every sector of society that you can think of is part of this. A targeted individual is a person who has been put in a depopulation program known as gang stalking. The program is funded by the government, and the TI is monitored and harassed 24 hours a day, seven days a week, inside and outside of their home. Most TIs have no idea how they were put into this program or how to get out. And for that matter, there is no way out. You are stalked from the day you are put into this program to the day you leave this earth. Targeting can happen to anyone in society. In the past, primary targets of programs of programs such as COINTELPRO have been minorities. Targeting, however, can happen to anyone. Individuals are often targeted for being outspoken, whistleblowers, dissidents, people who go up against wealthy corporations, women's groups, single women, anti-war proponents, and other innocent individuals. The majority of the targets are often not aware that they are being targeted in this way. For those targets that are aware that this is happening, they can be left feeling depressed, suicidal, confused, isolated, and mentally unstable. The objective objective of the campaign is the total destruction of the target. This program, you guys, is hell on earth, and that's the truth. So tonight we'll discuss this little-known and seldom-talked-about program. There are many depopulation programs going on right now, and as history has it, there always have been these type of programs. However, I believe there is more of these programs now than there ever were. And these are basically campaigns, campaigns against humanity. And this is just one of those campaigns. And like I said, it's called gang stalking, and there are other names that it that it goes by. Um, but this is very um, a little known program, and it's is not talked about very often. It's you know the the person that is the subject of the target. They're felt feeling alone. They're feeling depressed. They're feeling like they can't talk to anyone about this. Um, They they may feel like they're going insane, although they know what's happening to them. But the way the program is sickly designed is that if you mention this to someone, you sound crazy. And that is their point exactly, to make you look crazy, to make you sound crazy. Um, You're followed, like I said, you're harassed 24-7 inside your house, outside your house, at work, at school, and yes, this does happen to children as well, at church, yes, at church, it happens at church. Anywhere you go, you are harassed. People are recruited through what is called a smear campaign, which is they'll tell a lie um, on you, and when I say they, this 
program, I'm kind of jumping ahead of myself, but this program is 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 an extension of the COINTELPRO program, which was put together, um, I don't know the exact year, but it was to uh, disintegrate different groups like the um, the Black Panther movement and any kind of movement that were going on, the FBI would follow and harass these people to disband them. They would frame them, they would set them up, they would say they raped people, They would. it, it was terrible. So that program supposedly is disbanded, but it's really not. It's just taken on a new form, a new face, and it is still funded by the government. These people are um, skinheads, they're bikers, they're racists, they're gangbangers, they're ex-prison inmates, felons, they're children. Yes, they do use children. Um, they have training programs to actually train children to do this. Um, you know, because what they do is they use people who are in the natural environment that the target would be in. So, for instance, you're driving down the street, you see an influx of, let's just say, mail trucks. Well, mail trucks are supposed to be in the community, right? What people don't know is they're following you. They're harassing you. The target may know this because the target may see 15 mail trucks within a two-block radius. Every corner they turn, they may see one. Well, these people are recruited into this harassment of this of this target. But the part that makes you look crazy or insane, if you were to go to the police, who, by the way, are involved in some cases, if you were to go to them and say, this mail truck's been following me, you sound crazy. You sound crazy, but what people don't realize is that you just have 30 mail trucks every corner you turn. Every corner you turn, there's a police car. Every block you go down, there's a fire truck. So this is designed to break you, to break the target, to make the target go off and assault someone, or to make the target... Um, say something that sounds totally irrational. So then everybody's looking at you because they're like, well, that's just a cab. I mean, cabs are here. But reality is cabs are everywhere you go. People are everywhere you go. You see, you see the same car everywhere you go. You know you're being followed. When you're being followed, you know you're being followed. And what they do is they study the target for a long time before the target even realized they're put into this program. They're studied. Their habits are monitored. They monitor where they go, what they eat, what they buy at the store. And these people, by the way, are called gang stalkers. They're called perpetrators. Some of them are paid. Some of them are not paid. Some of them are your neighbors because with their smear campaign, they have told these people, this person is wanted for this horrible crime. We believe this person has raped this child. These are all lies. Why do they do this, you ask? They do this, and, and I am going to go through this, this document, but I'm just giving you an overview. They do this because this person may have been a whistleblower, this person may have um, simply pissed someone off. This person may have caused problems at the school. This, there's a number of reasons why a person's name is put into these programs. And this person is stalked. This person is stalked by everyone, and I mean everyone, that comes in contact with this person. They're stalked on the job. People follow them around, but they don't act like they're following them around. But the target knows they're being followed. But to the average person, it just looks like a normal day. And that's the sick part about this whole program. There are noise, there are what they call noise campaigns, where they just cause all this noise all day and all night and all day and all night. And all of this is designed to make you go overboard, to make you just lose it. This is a psychological 
warfare. This is a psychological attack. No one's touching you, and in some cases, they they there are extreme cases cases where they will poison the person or or kill them or you know. But for the most part, you're being stalked. You're being set up. They try to set you up every opportunity they get. They want to see you institutionalized. They want to see you go off and, and, and snap and do something to hurt someone. And believe me, there will be witnesses around who are stalkers that will go to court and testify against you. And then you'll be incarcerated. This is their goal. Their other goal is to get you to commit suicide because you're so stressed out all the time, to leave you destitute because you can't keep a job, because you're stressed out and you're getting harassed at work and everybody at work is involved and you can't go to anyone for help, you go to the police for help, it just gets worse. Believe me, when you go to the police for help, it will get worse. It will get worse. There are a lot of city officials involved, anybody involved with government, cable companies, utility companies, bread, anything you can think of, anyone you can think of, people at the grocery store. Sometimes you'll notice every time you pull up at the grocery store, they're conveniently collecting carts right by your car. When you come out, they're conveniently collecting the carts again right by your car. Now, that looks normal, right? But this happens every single time you go there. Or you come out of the store, someone's standing right by your car. Someone's always watching you. When you get in line, they are behind you. They are in front of you. A lot of times they will go down each and every aisle with you, and they'll leave the store as soon as you get in line. It's not always one person. Sometimes it's a group of people. Sometimes it's a family. Sometimes you'll get somewhere and there'll be people you know already there, people you haven't seen in a while. And all that seems normal, right? But when this is happening over and over and over and over, you start to notice the pattern. And it comes to a point where they will let you know. They will say something that no one should know. In public, they'll say something. And then you just start to put two and two together and realize this is not in my mind. But if you tell someone this, you sound crazy. Or if you try to report this, this is just one single incident, so that's not reportable. See, there's a lot of people involved. It's like a jigsaw puzzle. So there's a lot of people involved in the harassment of you. So when you report it, you can only report this one person that one day, so what, they're behind you at the gas station. That's nothing. But what people don't know is every time you go to the gas station, they're behind you. That's harassment. It's supposed to be illegal, but it's not reportable, and no one does anything. No one does anything to help you. Once you're in this program, you're in it until the day you die. So I want to I want to just go through this document Um on the website targetedindividuals.com, and it starts out talking about the system of this sick program. Many people grow up in society never realizing that the world is not really controlled by just governments, but it's also controlled by a system. Some people might consider this system similar to another government that operates outside the mainstream government. The system is more structured and less democratic that many of us realize or are willing to believe. The system that really exists and that controls society is really made up of powerful and elite corporations and governments. The powerful elite do not care who is in government because they will always have the primary say-so with how things go and what the final outcome is. The same has become true for corporations and powerful interests. Then, there is the will of the government, the body that appears to be elected by the people, but who is there really to serve the will of the powerful interests. To keep the system in place and run it smoothly, there are appendages that are set in place to teach the population how to act, think, behave, and yes, how to conform 
to the system. The system wants people to come up thinking that they are completely free and can act, think, and feel however they choose to. This is true to an extent as long as your interests do not run contrary to what the system has in mind. Once your interests once your interests start to run contrary or you do something to step out of what the system considers acceptable boundaries, that is when you enter the targeted individual zone. And you guys, that is not a zone you want to be in. Believe me, it is hell on earth, like I said. You know, when they when they talk about um in this article, when they talk about conforming, and, and if you don't conform, you know, that is when you start to see problems. You can see an example of that even with small children. When small children are in school and they don't conform to how all the other children are, like you might have a child that's a little hyperactive, um, they can't sit still, and especially you will see this a lot in boys, you know, they can't sit still, they can't focus, so the teacher is, is reading and this child is, you know, walking around or making a noise, what do they do? They put them on Prozac. All kids do not need Prozac. All people do not need Prozac. They do that to keep them in line, to get them to conform, to get them to act like everyone else. But the fact is God did not make us all the same. It doesn't make you a bad person because you're, you know, outspoken because you speak your mind, because you say, you know, what's really going on. But they start this conformity at a young age, and people don't see this. You know, if they can't control you, what they do? They kick you out of school. They lock you up. They want to shoot you up with drugs, you know. And that's another thing. For the targeted individuals who, you know, suffer anxiety attacks and, you know, the stress of all this, which is very stressful, you try your best not to allow the doctors or the system to put you on all these mind-controlling substances. It's not good. There's nothing wrong with you. It's something wrong with them. They're the perpetrators. And I know that it's stressful, but there are other ways that you can de-stress, and we'll talk about some of those ways. So um, targeting individuals... When these more conventional methods of control and conformity fail, then individuals can become targeted by the system in several ways. There are many ways that individuals can be made to brought in line from the, indi- from the simple, subtle methods of peer pressure to the more extreme. Many targeted individuals found that something about them and their personality profiles made them fall into this category. It could have been the girl at work who sexually harassed and decided to take the the corporation to court and would not stop fighting the system. She could be easily become a targeted individual. Or the student who is mobbed or or bullied out of school that decides to take the facility to task might also become a future targeted individual. The parent that goes, and by the way, we were were just talking about school system. People who homeschool their children, they are at risk for being targeted as well. And that's because they don't, think like everyone else. They're independent thinkers. And in this world, there's no room for independent thinkers. So those people, they don't realize that they can be targeted. Not that they all are, but they very well could fall into this category. The parent that goes up against the school board or who who refuses to give their child the latest newly approved vaccines might have problems if they refuse to comply. And people have got their children taken from them Um, because they will not get them vaccinated. Some people do not believe in vaccinations. Um, The journalist who goes after the story that the state would rather see killed, such as journalists who go after 911 Truth and other such stories, they will find themselves at the mercy of the bus all. The activists and dissidents who are too outspoken might find themselves targeted the target of COINTELPRO or other such programs. The whistleblower who told on the big bad corporations might also find themselves targeted by the state. 
There was a recent um, whistleblower in San Francisco, and she was a, a supervisor. I think she was a like a police supervisor or um, meter maid supervisor or some, something that have to do with law enforcement. And there was one of the officers that she was supervising. He was harassing some of the um, female people and some of the people on the street, and he was, like, sexually harassing people. So this particular um, officer, she supervising officer, she kept going to her superiors and reporting him, and nothing was done. So a year or so went by, and he's doing the same thing, steady making these sly remarks and, you know, these sexually charged remarks. And so she went to the official whistleblowers program, which I believe is supposed to be anonymous. Well, when she did that, that was it for her. She got fired. She got put into this um, targeted individual program. She just, life has been miserable ever, ever since. See, there's really, you know, we, like this article said, we have the illusion that we're free. We have freedom of speech. We have this and that. But, you know, this world seems to really not like people who stand for what's right and who stand for peace. And if you speak out, you are targeted. If you speak out against any injustices, you are targeted. Something is very sick there. Something is very wrong, very, very wrong with that. So the church member they have decided that they do not wish to be part of that new church that they had just joined might find themselves being stalked and harassed in the same way. And believe me, when you go to church, if you're a targeted individual, the harassment does not stop, even at church. Church members will be recruited into this. Remember, everyone in church is not saved. The Bible says the wheat and the tear will grow together. That's the good and the bad. And everyone in church is not saved. You will be stalked in church if you are a targeted individual. I just want you to know that. The unknowing person who just happens to upset that powerful person who is a part of powerful brotherhood who has connections, they might also find that their lives and future goals and ambitions are suddenly stripped away. The wife who tried to leave her abusive ex-spouse who just also happens to have the right connections. Many spouses of police officers have reported similar types of stalking and targeting individual types of harassment. I have heard that before. Because, you know, remember, they have connections. The police officers, they have connections, you know, and, and a lot of these programs are run by white supremacist groups, you know, skinheads and and these type people, and, you know, they're all connected in some kind of sick way. They are. And, and another note on that, these people are demonic. They care nothing about the Lord, nothing about God. In fact, if you're a Christian, you're probably going to get it even, even harder, even worse. The average guy who stands up for that other average guy, you know, good guys who, who try to help out other people, um, so if someone stands up for the for an average guy who is being bullied, if you accidentally step into the wrong situation and the efforts of some of these people, you could find yourself the next target of their harassment. Once you fall into the category of targeted individual, your harassment might range from subtle harassment to outright gang stalking and electronic harassment. Society is not what most people think it is. What we see, the world around, is an illusion. In many ways, the sooner we can come to that realization, the better off we will be. And that's the truth. Once targeted, once targeted by the system, many of us are unable to find help or assistance and will face a lifetime of harassment. To date, the best thing we can do for ourselves is exposing what is happening. Most of society takes part in these sorts of harassments in some way, shape, or form. So it is very imperative that we both, uh, that we be cognizant of the bigger picture and realize that we are up against a system of control and conformity. I'm telling you, there's no room for strong-willed, independent thinkers or outspoken people. It's, it's sad, but, it, but it's very true. 
Um, and and the part where it says most uh, most of society takes part, it is really true. They 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 recruit people. They swear them to secrecy. Um, no one will ever tell you that you're in this program. They will never. You can you can ask someone directly um, if they know anything. No one will ever 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 tell you. You will never know, but you will know because God will reveal it to you. But no one will tell you. They're sworn to secrecy, which reminds me of um, of the New World Order, of the Illuminati. They're, they're sworn to secrecy. They will never tell you anything. So this is just, a, a you know, another portion of this New World Order stuff. That's all it is. Gang stalking is a covert investigation that is open on an individual. The individual is then placed under overt and covert forms of surveillance. That's indoors and outdoors, you guys. The person is followed around 24-7. Foot patrols and vehicle patrols are used to follow the individual around as part of the monitoring process. During these patrols, a one-handed sign signal is used to assist the citizen informants when communicating to each other. If you are a person that is uh, very aware of your surroundings and just in tune to what's going on around you, one thing about this program, it can make you hypersensitive. So, you you, you know, you really want to pray against that. You don't want to become hypersensitive where just everything just has you jumpy and paranoid and everyone's a suspect. It will do that to you because of that whole desensitization program that they put you through. But you don't want to to become desensitized. So, you know, pray against that. But you do need to be aware of your environment. You do need to be aware of what's going around going on around you. And if you are an observant person, you will notice these hand gestures and, you know, these different types of people and what they look like. And you will also feel their spirit because they have a demonic spirit. Now, like I said, a lot of these people stalking you are your neighbors, and we'll get into that more. They're your neighbors. They're the people at the grocery store. But then there's different levels of this. The the neighbors and those people have been recruited through this smear campaign where they lie and say, you know, um, we need you to watch this person because this is a bad person and this person is under investigation. So, you know, these people think that they're doing something good. And for the most part, these are not paid people in this government program. These are people like, you know, your neighborhood watch people. You're, you know, because there is no way that they can watch you 24-7 unless they recruit everyone in your life, right? So that's why they recruit, and they will recruit relatives. They will recruit your children if, you know, if, if they can. They will recruit anyone, and they will swear them to secrecy. But, you know, the missing piece where people don't ask themselves, they never tell the person exactly why. Sometimes they even have a fake file that they will, you know, bring along with them and say, this is the file on that person, you know, and it all sounds so official. So, you know, you have these people, the people at the local bakery, you know, just everybody, DMV, you know, wherever, and, you know, they're all watching you. But then you also have people that actually go to these meetings, you know, they're, they're trained, they're on the payroll, you know, a lot of these are people that just got out of jail. You know, they need some money. These are homeless people. You know, there there are some paid people. These are people on your job. You know, so there, there's different types of people involved, almost everyone that you come in contact with, and that is so that is to help them with this 24-7 surveillance because there's no other way they could um, monitor you and harass you 24 hours, seven days a week unless they involve everyone. So gang stalking is a systematic form of control which seeks to control every aspect of a targeted individual's life. Gang stalking has many similarities to workplace mobbing but takes place outside in the community. It's called, it's called gang stalking because the target is followed around and placed under surveillance by groups of organized civilian spies or snitches. And like I said before, 
just about every government agency you can think of, police, fire, utility, vehicle, janitors, um, cafeteria workers, co-workers, store clerks, security guards, especially, especially when you go to stores, uh, department stores, grocery stores, they'll follow you around. They try to cut you off um, while you're walking. They try to make it look like you're following them. Remember, it's all to set you up. Everything's to set you up to make you snap. So never buy into it. Never buy into it. Ignore them as much as you can. Stay prayed up. Um, bus drivers are recruited into this. Ambulance drivers, soda truck drivers, cable, cable TV, utilities, just anybody, children. Um, will ride their bikes past you, will skateboard past you, will skate past you, will do flips past you. I mean, it, it is just sick. It's sick. Landlords are recruited into this. Um, landlords will give um, the stalkers the entry, the, the key to enter into your apartment. They will move things around. They will They will gaslight you. You know, if you ever saw that movie Gaslight, they will do that. But there's, remember, a lot of these people really are being victimized. Not all of them. Some know what they're doing. Some know that they're stalking you. But others are being victimized. And I say that because they are fed lies. Because if they weren't fed these lies, most of these are decent people and they wouldn't do this to, to anyone. They wouldn't. But if they think they're helping to bring someone to justice who's a criminal, then they'll participate. So this is just a demonic program all the way around, you guys. It really is. Um, many targeted individuals are harassed in this way for months or even years before they realize that they are being targeted by an organized protocol of harassment. So when this stuff first happens to you, um, you wonder, like, is, did I really see that car, like, for every block I turn, that car been behind? You know, you wonder. You wonder, am I really seeing a police car every block I go on? Are they following me? You know, you wonder. You're not sure at first. You know, and then you start to think, like, you know, maybe my mind is playing tricks on me. You know, it takes a while for you to realize that this stuff is really happening. And then you tell someone, they'll be like, well, maybe the car was going the same place you were going. You know, they don't they don't catch it because this is not a program that you hear about. This is one of those secret programs that people don't really talk about. So until it happens to you, you don't realize what's going on. But then it comes to a point because at first they study you, like I said earlier, they study you for, you know, months, maybe a year, I don't know, you know. But then it will come to a point where you will realize, no, this is really something going on here. And, you know, and, and if you if you ever doubt this, one of the good ways to, to kind of um, validate what you're thinking, you can start writing things down. Start writing things down. You know, different little occurrences that you might think the, is, is happening. Write it down, you know, write down the times, the day, you know, just start writing things down, and then that way you can go back and see if there's a pattern there. That will help you to validate in your mind that, yes, yeah, something really is happening. But there's going to come a point, if this is happening, there will come a point where they will make sure that you know it's happening. They will make sure. They will yell out your name. They will say something no one else knows about you. They will let you know because they want you to know what's going on at some point. But they want to catch you off guard. So many targeted individuals are harassed this way for months or even years before they realize they're being targeted by an organized protocol of harassment. What happens during gang stalking is very similar to what happened to many innocent individuals in the former East Germany or activists and dissidents in Russia. Many innocent people in the former East Germany would be targeted for these harassment programs and then their friends, family, and the community at large would be used to monitor, prosecute, and harass them. And it is true. They will, they will recruit anyone, anyone. They will recruit anyone, your mother. They will recruit anyone. 
to monitor and harass you because they will make sure that you are harassed 24-7, and they will tell any lie that they need to tell. Because once you become an enemy of the state, their goal is to your demise. Their goal is to see you dead. However that needs to happen, that is the goal. So in Russia, it was used by the state to declare activists, dissidents, or anyone they thought to be an enemy of the state as mentally unfit, and many were institutionalized using this form of systematic control. So if you find yourself set up, you know, don't let them set you up, number one. Do not let them set you up, because they will. They will definitely try. But if you find yourself in that position, and you find yourself in jail or institutionalized, the harassment will not stop. It's never going to stop. They will have people in there harass you. And there are certain things that will happen during these harassment campaigns where you will know it's geared towards you because you see this stuff every day. You're desensitized to this now. You see this. You know, they have people always standing around you, close on you driving close on you in a paradigm shape around your car while you're driving. Now, this looks normal to everyone else, but this happens to you everywhere you go all the time. There are people all up on you while you're in line. There are people, every time you get in line and you get ready to pay for something, people come out of nowhere and they're trying to see what you're buying. This will work on your psyche if you let it. And that's the key word, if you let it. But in the beginning, you will be very fragile because you don't know what's going on. But after a while, you will realize that every time you open your door, one of your neighbors opens their door. They come out. Or they drive up as you come out. Or they look out their window. This is called synchronizing, synchronization. This is what they do because they have recruited all your neighbors. So every time you leave your house, Someone will walk by, walking the dog, or a kid will come by. You will never be alone. If you allow people, actually, there have been stories where they will come into your house where you're not at home. Like I said, if you live in an apartment complex, they will gain entrance through the um, the manager or the maintenance man or, you know, because they recruit all these people saying that you're a bad person. If you live in a house, they can do the same because they're connected with locksmiths and they're connected with all these people. So they will come in your house, and no one's going to say anything in the neighborhood because to them, you're a bad guy. So you have to know that they are constantly trying to find ways to make you crack, to make you snap. Don't do it. Don't do it. Once you know what's going on, stay prayed up. That's my best advice I could give you. Stay prayed up. God will get you through this. He will. You're stronger than you think you are. You're stronger than you know you are. Draw on that inner strength. Get through it. Get through it. The closest thing to gang stalking that, excuse me, democratic countries have seen before is McCarthyism, COINTELPRO, and Red Squad programs. Red Squad programs were used for monitoring and harassment of various groups, and they have been in place for over 100 years. Civilian spies are recruited from every level and every sector of life, just like with COINTELPRO investigations. Everyone in the target's life is made part of this ongoing, never-ending, systematic psychological harassment and manipulation of the target. These actions are specifically designed to control the target and to keep them in line. See, like I said before, there's no room for activists, for outspoken people. That's exactly what they want to do. They want to make you conform. And what you need to know is that you're not a bad person because you have an opinion. So what are, what are you trying to conform? To? What, are, what are they trying to conform you to? God did not make all of us alike. So it would be unnatural, if you're an outspoken person, it would be unnatural for you to be quiet, a quiet person who goes along with 
you know, with the program. That's not normal for some people. That might be the norm for some, maybe for most, but it's not for everyone. They should not be forced to, to conform to what people think you ought to be. You should be what God made you to be. These actions are also designed to destroy the target over years and make them look crazy and leave them with no form of support. For the targets of this harassment, gang stalking is experienced as a covert, psychological, emotional, and physical attack that is capable of immobilizing and destroying a target over time. For the state, it's a way to keep the targets in line and in control or to destroy them. The modern-day systematic form of control could only be funded at a high government level, just like it has in other societies where these similar types of harassment programs have been implemented. It's all part of a system control and conformity that has been in place for many years, a system of control with many local groups and appendages taking part. And that's true because I'm pretty sure they spend thousands, if not millions, on, on a target you know, throughout the whole campaign. So it has to be funded by the government. Who who else who else has that kind of money to to pay all these people? They're on someone's payroll. So the the goals of gang stalking, um the goal is to isolate the target from all forms of support so that the target can be set can be set up in the future for arrest, institutionalization or for suicide. So you know, just know that they, they, they spend every waking hour, they have meetings about how to get you out of society, about how to get you, the target, to commit suicide, to commit a crime, to end up in jail. And like I said, they have people in jail waiting for you to get there. They have people in the mental institutions waiting for you to get there. So, you know, just be very careful. There's one lady um, who said that the pharmacist was um, constantly giving her friend, who was a targeted individual, the wrong medication, which she believes on purpose, that she was doing, that the pharmacist was doing this on purpose. So, you know, they're constantly trying to find ways to eliminate you. It's crazy. You know, and they and they and they will try to make you look crazy. And I'm gonna say this too: if you choose to uh, to go to the police for help, which some people, you know, say that you shouldn't, some say that you should. I say pray about it and do, you know, what's best for you. But I will say, if you do, go in a calm state of mind. Do not go when you're upset. Take someone who loves you and cares about you with you so that they can calm you down because what will happen is they will get you there. You will go there to file a report. They will try to turn everything on you. They will interrogate you without you not, you not even realizing that, and they will set you up to make you look crazy, and the whole thing will be taped and used against you later. So if you go there in an emotional state and you're screaming and hollering, they're going to play on that. So don't do it. Try not to do that. That's just good advice right there. You know, um, these people always want to make the target of this harassment vulnerable. They want to make you destitute. They want you to lose your job. They want you to have no friends, no family. They want you to be isolated. They want you to be lonely. They want you to be scared. This is what they do to the targets. The secondary goal seems to be to make the target homeless, jobless, um, give them a breakdown, and the primary goal seems to be to drive the target to force suicide, just like what they did with some of the targets in COINTELPRO. It's a useful way of eliminating perceived enemies of the state. And, you know, um, be careful, too, at work, because people at work will try to set you up, and I may have already said this, they will follow you everywhere. They will follow you to the bathroom. They just happen to be going to the bathroom when you are. And like I said, this looks normal 
to everyone else, but you know that every time you go to the bathroom, three other people come. Every time you stand up, five other people stand up. You know this. But other people, it looks normal. Um, And janitors, gardeners, building maintenance people, anyone who would be in a natural environment, they are used to harass you, to watch you, to follow you. Because a janitor can be just about anywhere in the building, right? So they just happen to be where you are all the time. A gardener is outside, you know, and and not and it's usually not one person who does like the whole full day of harassment or the full following, you know. You would think like when you think of getting um, followed or harassed, you you would think, you know, this person is going to follow me from here to L.A. It's not necessarily like that. They synchronize. They switch off. One person might follow you four blocks and then they'll take the exit because remember. You know, this is a game they're playing, you know, and the game is they pretend they're not following you and you pretend you don't see it. That's a sick game. So one person may follow you uh, a a few blocks, they take an exit, then another person pick you up, you know, and then they take the exit and then another person, you know, or it may be a whole family. It's sick. It's sick. But like I said, if you're in tune with what's going on around you, you will notice these things. But you don't, you know, you want to get to the point where you really don't care. Let them do what they do because they thrive off the attention. And once they realize they don't have your attention anymore, then their little campaign is dead, right? So go on with your life as much as you can. You know, they constantly switch up the game. You know, when one thing's not working anymore, they put their heads together and they come up with something else. But, you know, just just roll with it, you know. Just roll with it. There's nothing else you can do. Targeting can happen to anyone in society. In the past, primary targets of programs such as Cointel Pro have been minorities. You know, they were really big on the Black Panthers, and most of them were black. Um, targeting, however, can happen to anyone. Individuals are often targeted for being outspoken, whistleblowers, dissident, I may have read this already, people who go up against wealthy corporations, women's groups, single women, anti-war proponents, and other innocent individuals. The majority of the targets are often not aware that they are being targeted in this way. When a target moves, changes jobs, the harassment still continues. Every time the target moves, the same lies and slander will be spread on the systematic monitoring and harassment will continue. You know, and then, you know, like I said, that smear campaign, they're, they're going to constantly smear your name everywhere you go. Everywhere you go. You will notice, I can't even describe some of the things they do. Um, because it's so subtle, but you'll notice things like you know you go to you you go somewhere um, for a job to take a test, right? And you know people are sitting everywhere. This is just hypothetical, okay? So people are just taking a seat in this room to take this test for a job. So someone is standing at the door and they say. Um, okay, I'll have you sit up here. Okay, so that seat is in the front. But then they tell the person behind you, I'll have you sit over here, you know, and that seat is in the back. Okay, so that that seems normal, right? Okay, so then you go and you take part two of this test a whole nother week. The same thing happens. Then you start to notice, well, why do they always sit me right in the front in front of the teacher? See, it's these kind of things. It looks normal. But you, the target, knows that this happens every time. So then you start to put two and two together. You know, it's it's um it's just sick. It's really crazy. It, it like I said, it will work on your psyche if you, if you allow it to. So people from all walks of life are being recruited to be the eyes and the ears of the state. People from all races, and this is a state program, you guys. People from all races, ages, genders. Every sector of society that you can think of is part of this. Civilian spies, snitches include, but are not limited to, and before I lose my thought here, let me let me say this. Children are being trained to be spies. 
There are there are so many government campaigns for this depopulation program, but children are being trained to be spies as early as five and six years old. I hear that they are even training Boy Scouts and Girl Scouts, Peace Corps, all these people. You see these billboards that say, see something, say something. You have neighborhood watch programs. These are all being used to spy on people. We are all being treated like we are terrorists. Everyone is not a terrorist. You know, so this is just all part of this campaign. Every sector of society that you can think of is part of this. Civilian spies, snitches, include but are not limited to general laborers, the wealthy, bikers, and you will see an influx of motorcycles at times, drug dealers, drug users, street people, um, punks, hip-hop culture, KKK people, black activists, church groups, yes, people in church also spy on you and harass you, um, firemen, police officers, um, and like I said, if you ever report this, be in a calm state of mind because they will interrogate you, they will turn it around, they will ask you questions to set you up, to try to take your kids from you. So be very, very careful when you report this. Um, lawyers can be involved, healthcare workers, storekeepers, maids, janitors, cable installers, phone repair people, um, mail carriers. Uh, another part of this harassment is that your mail will be opened. You know, um, constantly your mail will be open, um, and sometimes it will come right off the mail truck open, so you know that no one went into your mailbox because that's the way it was delivered to you. Uh, locksmiths, electricians, there is really no minimum or maximum age. You know, uh, elderly people, they, they use them to harass you. Anybody who can fit into a natural environment, they will use them. Some of these citizens might be recruited via programs such as Citizens Corps, Weed Seeds, Citizens on Phone Patrol, City Watch, TIPS. Many started with good intentions to help patrol and monitor the cities and neighborhoods. Others are recruited via family uh, families, others at school, others at work. Since every sector, class, race, and society takes part, recruitment is multifaceted. Many do not understand or care that the end consequence of this harassment protocol is to destroy a person. So why do people participate in this gang stalking? Um, there are many reasons that someone takes part in this activity. Some do it for the sense of power that it gives them. You know, they, they may feel superior over you. You know, they may feel like they're an undercover cop. I mean, who knows? But they definitely do feel that uh, superiority over you. Um, others do this as a way to make friends, you know, and to keep friends. It's um, something social and fun for some people. Many in society use the one hand um, sign language to communicate and is very effective in breaking down uh, race, gender, and social barriers. Uh, others are forced or blackmailed by the state or the police into taking part. You know, it might keep some people out of jail if they, if they do it, you know. Um, some people are told that they are part of homeland or national security and being used to help keep an eye on dangerous or emotionally disturbed individuals. So my question is, if a person is, let's just hypothetically say, if a person is emotionally disturbed, excuse me, but they're not bothering anyone, what is the problem? Why are you trying to throw them over the edge? There are many people that almost everyone actually has some some sort of emotional disturbance, you know, just about everybody because of the state, you know, that this world is in. Everyone's going through something. So why would you intentionally try to throw them over the edge? That's just evil. That is the devil. That's what that is. They see themselves as heroic spies for the state. Civilian spies can come from a variety of, a di of different programs, such as the Citizen Corp, Citizen on Phone Patrol, CLPP, We Seed, um, City Watch, or some other centralized government programs. 
Others are just local thugs or informants who are already being used for other activities and their energies are just diverted over into these community spy programs. Some may be given the choice of spying for the state or the police or going to jail. So, I mean, which would you pick, you know? And most people want to be free, so... Um, others are told outright lies and slander about the target to get them to go along with running the target's life. And I will say again, in defense of some people, some people really don't know about this program. They're just asked, you know, if you can watch your neighbor over there because, you know, this person is mentally unstable or this person has raped a little girl. We we believe this person is a suspect in a robbery. You know, I mean, most people would do it, right? They don't realize that they're part of this sick um, harassment campaign. They don't realize it. You know, they, they they don't. They think that they're doing something good. So in defense of those people, they you know, they're being used and they, they don't realize it. Uh, many are, however, just average citizens who have been recruited by the state the same way citizens were recruited in the former East Germany and other countries. It's the way society is. Techniques used against the target, a few of the most common techniques are classic conditioning, getting a target sensitized to an everyday stimuli. The target over a period of months or even years is negatively sensitized to an everyday stimuli, which is then used to harass them. It's used out in public to let them know they're constantly being harassed and monitored. Some examples of everyday stimuli that might be used include sound colors, patterns, actions, red, white, yellow stripe pins clicking, um, key jangling, loud coughing, loud whistling, loud smacking, um, clapping of hands together, uh, police sirens, and then, you know, they, they get past you, and then all of a sudden you don't hear them anymore. The same thing with um, ambulances. You know, they, you know, turn their sirens on you a lot, you know, and you don't you don't know why these sirens are, are zooming past you all the time, but it's happening a lot. And that is to get you um, to sensitize you to this stimuli that they're doing. Um, and you will see an influx of these of these vehicles. You will start to see that, you know, everywhere I know there's this these ambulances and they have these lights on. They will turn their high beams on you. They will turn their, their uh, they just harass you, you know. And, and so then this 24-hour surveillance, they will involve following the targets everywhere they go, learning about the target, where they shop, work, play, who their friends and family are, uh, getting close to the target, moving into the community apartment where they live across the street. And, you know, they do do that. These Some of these programs even pay for these um, stalkers to um, rent houses and apartments across the street from you, next door, down the street. You know, they actually fund this. They fund this program. Um They will bug. Uh, they will bug your phone, your house, your computer. You know, if you let service people in your house to do work, don't be surprised if they don't bug your house because they will bug your house. Um, your telephone. You need to know that your telephone, even if you are not in this program, your telephone may be bugged. You know, your conversations are constantly monitored. This conversation is monitored. There are people that are here who are not, you know, just regular listeners. Everything is monitored. You have to know that, you know. Your computer, everything you do is monitored. So just be aware of that. Um, the goal is to isolate the target. Um, this is done via slander or smear campaign and lies. People in the target's um, community are told that the target is a thief, into drugs, a prostitute, a pedophile, um, crazy, or in trouble for something, and that they need to be watched. False files are even produced on the target shown to neighbors, family, and storekeepers. That's sick. You just really want to want to hurt someone. Like, that is really sick. Um, the noise and mimicking campaigns, disrupting the target's life, sleep, with loud power tools, construction, stereos, door slamming, 
et cetera, um, talking in public about private things in the target's life, mimicking actions of the target. They will dress like you. They will pay, uh, play the same music that you play um, in your car or in your house. They will um, do things to mimic you, to let you know, you know, like I said, it looks normal to everyone else, but they'll do things to let you know that you are being stopped. Um, and hope that you lash out and say something or do something. So basically letting the target know that um, they are in the target's life. They want you to know. Daily interferences, nothing um, that would be too overt to the untrained eye, but psychologically degrading and damaging the target over time. Everyday life um, breaks in street theater. You will, some targets will experience flat tires, sleep deprivation, um, drugging food, putting dirt on target's property, mass strangers doing things in public to annoy the target. Um, you may get your house broken into often, once or maybe often, your car stolen, um, bicycles constantly riding by your house with grown men on them at times, sometimes children. Like I said, the sirens, you know, all the time, the police constantly on your block or parked in front of your house. Um, they just do anything to harass you. You know, these strangers might get text messages to be a specific um, time and place to perform uh, specific actions. They might stand on your corners. Um, and you will see that a lot. You will see... Um, perpetrators, or these stalkers, also known as perpetrators, sitting in cars a lot, standing on corners a lot, pretending to be walking dogs, you will see this a lot. Um, it might seem harmless to these strangers, but it could be causing a great psychological trauma for the target, um, blocking the target's path, getting ahead of them in line. Um, and that's very true. You know, you'll see a lot of rude behaviors, and, again, it's all to make you go off. Um, but you will get flipped the bird when you're driving. You will get horns honked at you. You will get people cutting you off on the road. You will be in line at a store, and people will cut you off and, you know, try to step on your foot. It's just all day long you have to go through being harassed. It's an extension of, you know, how kids get bullied at school. It's, it's, it's an extension of that. But much, well, I won't say worse because that's very traumatic for a child as well. But it's along those lines. Um, you you may get cut off or boxed, you know, while you're driving. Um, so where does the support or funding from this come from? Um, though gang stalking is itself is immoral and unethical in nature, programs such as this um, in democratic countries and non-democratic countries have always been funded by the government. They are the only ones with enough money, coordination, and power to keep such a system in place. The coordinated efforts then join hands with others for the systematic form of control and harassment. The long-term effects on the target. Um, McKinney stated that the objective is to force the individual to commit an act of violence, whether suicide or murder, under conditions which can be plausibly denied by the government. The um, antagonistic public mobbing of a target is apparently intended to provoke an outburst so they may end up incarcerated or institutionalized. The purpose is to completely isolate and remove all social support, economic support, and impossible um, to drive the targets to suicide. Isolation of uh, the individual from members of his or her immediate family is virtually assured when highly focused forms of electronic harassment commence. Other objectives appear to be uh, to be separate appear to be to separate a person from friends and family, keep them unemployed, induce homelessness, and reduce the quality of life so much that, suffer, that they suffer a nervous breakdown, end up medicated or hospitalized. 
Uh, McKinney added that other long-term objectives of these harassment campaigns appear to be uh, to induce a sense of perverted loyalty towards the very agencies engaged in the individual harassment. Moving to a completely new location will not stop this. All normal escape mechanisms have been removed in all of the NATO countries. Reportedly, even when hospitalized targets are still harassed, referring to the futility of moving to another location. Um, your protocol follows you whenever you go, so it's a waste of, where, wherever you go, so it's a waste of time. All of these harassment techniques are recurrent. They're non-sequential, and they are overlapping, proclaimed Moray. And basically, it's forever. They never leave you alone. You're even followed out of the country. So this happens in other countries, too. Actually, I believe it probably happens more in other countries than, than here, um, but it does happen here. Interestingly, interestingly, if someone under investigation killed himself, most within the sphere of the person's life would probably think this happened because they had something to hide, not because they were repeatedly injured. Therefore, bogus investigations may also provide a cover for an induced suicide by creating the appearance of a guilty conscience. Suicides um, might also qualify as stage accidents. I've heard that before, particularly when plausible, de uh, plausibly deniable government involvement has been surfaced. So some of the symptoms are nervous breakdown. Um, th these are things that the target experiences, especially in the beginning when they don't know what's going on. Um, nervous breakdown, severe depression, severe panic attacks, heart attacks, other severe illnesses, suicide, violence directed at third parties, going postal, um, uncontrolled acting out, feeling suicidal or homicidal, persistent anxiety, uh, fatalistic outlook on life, frequent or longer um, sick leave or disability at work and isolation. Now, let me say something about this uh, feeling suicidal and homicidal and or homicidal. If you choose to seek therapy on this, or on anything for that matter, um, be very careful what you say to your therapist because that stuff is recorded. It has been said, I do not know how true it is, but it has been said that some therapists are aware of this program and are involved. I do not know how true that is. Uh, make sure your spirit matches up with your therapist. If you are not feeling like you are being helped in this area, or maybe there are just some therapists that don't understand this program because it is, you know, um, a, a secret society, so to speak. A lot of people don't know about it. So, you know, to their defense, maybe, maybe they don't know. But I will say be very careful about what you say to your therapist, to law enforcement, to anyone, because you will be institutionalized. You will be put on heavy medication, and you don't want to be on controlled substances. You really don't. You really don't. You want to be as, as clear-minded as possible. Um, according to uh, Murray, Muzert, and McKinney, other reported symptoms are um, forced on the medication, which is what I just spoke about, uh, for anxiety and depression. Um, by all means, if you feel like, you know, you need some anxiety medication, talk to your, you know, your doctor or your therapist about it, but, uh, you know, just be cautious. That's, that's all I'm saying. When it comes to the medication, be cautious because you don't want to be in a controlled state you know, especially all your life. Do you know the fact is you have to you, you have to deal with this as cold as that sounds. You have to come to the to the to the point of acceptance. This is what's happening and you have to, you know, accept that. And the sooner you accept that and, and, and the other part I'll say about that is the sooner you um you know, because the, the ultimate fear is death for most people. 
even if you're not in this program. That is most human beings' ultimate fear. So once you conquer that fear of death and you know where your soul is going, once you get your life right with God, you know, and you stay prayed up and, 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 and find things that bring you peace, medication, you know, swimming, exercising, nature, music, sewing, whatever it is that brings you peace, reading, you know, family, if you have some in your life, um, friends, if you have some in your life, whatever brings you peace, you know. But the, the main thing is you have to have a relationship with God because God is the only one that can get you through something this horrific. This is horrible. This is dehumanizing. God is the only person that can get you through this. And once you get that inner peace, hence the name of the show, once you get that inner peace, you don't have to worry about what's happening out there. You don't have to worry about what they're trying to do to you. You know what they're doing to you. God knows what they're doing to you. But you have to know where your soul is going because reality is whether they kill you, whether you kill yourself, or whether you die of natural causes, you're going to die. I'm going to die. We're going to die. Everyone is going to die eventually, right? But the point is, no matter how you go or when you go, you have to know where your soul is going. Either your soul is going to heaven or hell. And once you deal with that reality and learn to accept the inevitable, you will be okay. You will get through this because you know that your soul is going to the almighty God when it leaves this earth. There is nothing these stalkers can do to stop that. So just accept what is going on in your life, wherever you find yourself. Whatever situation, like Paul said in the Bible, whatever, whatever situation you find yourself, you're content. They, these stalkers cannot kill your soul. Your soul is going to the Almighty God, and their soul is going to hell for what they're doing to you. And that's the truth. That's the truth. So learn to accept. Ask God to help you to accept because you you can't change this situation. These stalkers are, you know, they have put you in this program. They have put you in this program, and you have to accept that. And the sooner you do that, the better off you're going to be. And that's going to be it for tonight. I want to thank you so much for joining me. I really appreciate it. Like I said, I have planned to dedicate this entire radio blog to people who suffer through this torture every day. The bigger picture here of this stalking campaign, of this gang stalking depopulation program. The bigger picture here is the New World Order, and there's a lot of aspects to the New World Order. So I plan to ask God to lead me to tackle some of these issues to help me to understand better what's going on in our world today and hopefully to help someone else to understand. So we're going to keep praising the Lord. We're going to keep our heads up. We're going to be strong. Until next time, good night and God bless you.